Hi, I'm Sam Humphreys, and I'm part of the security strategy team at Exabeam. And hello, I'm Steve Moore, Chief Security Strategist at Exabeam. For me, this report is important because it allows organizations to start conversations. It's something that doesn't get explored enough. And so when we go out and speak to 300 people and ask them their perspectives on the state of the SOC, they all give different answers. And we splice that up from analyst to mid-level manager to CIS or CIO. So you can go back to the report and look to see, okay, where do we have a difference of opinion? And that affects lots of different things from career, detection logic, funding, you know, budgeting. So that's why I like it the most. It also is a great place to look for things like overconfidence, underinvestment, you know, false pretense on what we should be doing versus what we are doing. Specifically, this version of the report, I think is important because we broaden the scope. We used to speak to folks in the US and the UK, and this year is the first year where we've included responses from Germany and Canada and from Australia. Having that more kind of global feel to the report, I think, helps us validate things more and also spot the nuances between those countries, as well as the different role types and organization sizes. The other part I find really interesting is seeing how things change year over year. And we've definitely seen that in some areas, some things in a good way and other things have gone maybe in not such a good way. This being the third year is great. And I'm really excited to see next year when we be able to show the overlay with those additional countries included. One of the interesting observations from the report this year is a theme of, I believe, overconfidence. Now, we don't ask why they believe they're so confident directly, but 82% of front-level staff, mid-level management, and executives believe that they're sort of good enough to find advanced threats and the types of things that would hit them from the inside and out. This is a little confusing especially when you begin looking at their ability to view their own environment. So most organizations, about 60% of them, don't even see all the information they need to in order to identify a problem on the network. And so they're claiming lack of visibility, but yet there's overconfidence in the ability to detect. And this is a little confusing. And from a, from a evaluation standpoint, needs, I think, further discussion especially of the of just in general, right? So the advice is I would have is if you find yourself in this position, if you believe that there's overconfidence in your organization, you need to sort of counter that with facts around capabilities and visibility and behaviors within your analytic and response teams. So what's even more interesting on this is that when we asked respondents around areas that they believe to be underfunded, kind of there were some big percentages that came up in the three key areas around technology, staffing and training, which does beg the question, are you really geared up to detect threats? So on the technology side, it was 49% of respondents felt that technology was underfunded. Staffing total was 37 and 44% on training. So you know, these numbers are not backing up that, that confidence that's initially being reported about uh, SOC's capability on the threat detection side. One of the more interesting things that we cover in the report, at least to me, is pain. Pain to me is the kind of the, the opposite of a motivator. And as leaders, we need to be concerned about that. We also need to understand the difference between the opinion of the executive and the day of the analyst. And so one of the things we break down is not only ranking these, uh, but also looking at the differences of opinion. And so you have things like inexperience of staff, that rates very high to the frontline staff. So when you bring more people in, are they experienced enough? Do they have the skills? The executives aren't worried about this. Uh, and this shows in the report. The other is this time spent on things like document creation. Uh, this is generally a product of audit. Most people in a SOC hate that. It's the kind of thing that would cause a career problem if you failed an audit. So there's a high 
interest in that uh, and passing it, but it's kind of a time sink. It, it often keeps the sock from finding and responding to bad things. And so the advice I have to the reader, the consumer of the report is, look at these deltas, look at these differences. And to the executive, I say, go down, if you see these deltas and have a chat with your team, ask them plainly, what's the worst part of your job? What could be better? Understand those differences because as we see other themes in the report, retention is an issue, skill is an issue, training is, there's many issues here that we need to address as leaders and as analysts. And this is a conversation for all of that. One of the areas that we cover in the report that kind of talks to that whole inexperienced staff piece is how frequently SOC staff are trained. Now, I think that security is a little strange for, as an industry in that if you're in operations, it is kind of on you to go and do training in your own time quite a lot. It's expected to go to conferences on weekends, do stuff at night. And we look at how frequently SOC personnel are reporting that they're being trained. A positive that we saw year over year is that in the UK last year, SOC staff are reporting that they were being trained once a quarter, and it was a, a whopping 12% reported that they got trained once a quarter, which is you know, it's hardly ever. We saw a positive shift this year. That number's jumped up to 40%. So that could well be the output of a good conversation of someone saying, hey, we need more training during working hours. But either way, it's a great shift. The skills gap is real. So if you are hiring less experienced people, making sure you're taking time to train them in office time as well as them wanting to do stuff in their own time is a good thing. Everyone's concerned about retention, but not everyone agrees about the best way to measure it. And looking again at the differences of perspective is important. The biggest area we saw from frontline staff in terms of why it's hard for them to stay is that they don't have a career path. In fact, 64% said that was the number one reason. Sadly, the executives, typically the people that are, should be helping mentor and uh, provide opportunities, very few of them actually said that this was an issue to them. And so once again, this is a conversation starter about the retention of, of and the well-being, honestly. You know, sometimes it's not always money. It's feeling like you matter. It's feeling like that you've got uh, someone looking over your shoulder uh, to help mentor you. And so mapping out a career path is one of those important things. I don't think anybody joins security operations with the view to becoming like a tier one analyst for the rest of their life. They're looking to move up, they're looking to do more interesting things. So if you combine that with the issues on the training side, this lack of defined career path, it, it really does speak to a problem, especially if you're in a highly manual process organization where you're literally kind of just churning through stuff like a conveyor belt all day long. And then you've got no hope for like kind of what your life could be. That's a pretty depressing place to be. So I think, you know, that's something for the leadership side of the house really to, to look at working on to improve that for their, for their employees. One surprise in terms of owned capabilities or at least areas of focus in a SOC is actually automation something that's in a asymmetric job like a security operations center where there's a small team looking to defend generally a much larger network uh, automation is a key piece of that both for information collection and response from the respondents that we had only about half actually own automation which means either it or somebody else owns it or no one at all this is an area i think that needs to improve this should be a dedicated job function and somebody looking at both the tactics and the strategy of automation and how it would improve the performance and honestly, the happiness of a security operations center. If you're interested in a different perspective, join us for a special recording of the new CISO podcast, June 25th. And in addition to the podcast, obviously do check out the report. We've just given you our highlights right now. There are 81 pages to the report. So obviously we have a lot more to say. If you're interested in learning more from us and hearing our opinions, join Steve and myself for a webcast on June 30th. Thank you.